Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. I like to think I keep my finger on the pulse. I tend to know a fair amount about what games are coming out, what games are hot or not, and what games have been and gone. But the board game industry is bustling, and it's not surprising that hundreds of titles have slipped through my net over the years. One such title is Endless Pass, a Viking saga. This is a card game for 2-6 players, published by WizKids in 2018, and until my recent birthday when I received it as a gift from my family, I had never heard of it. Or at least, it had failed to register to the point where I couldn't recall hearing of it, which amounts to the same thing. So let's take a closer look and see what I've been missing out on. The premise behind the game is simple. The Midgard Serpent is stirring, spawning the serpentine endless who are causing trouble as Ragnarok approaches. Brave Viking warriors track these creatures in the Endless Pass, seeking glory as they attempt to aid the gods. It's not much of a plot as plots go, but it's more than sufficient for what amounts to a 30 minute take that card game where players screw each other over in a race to have the most points while staying alive. As far as first impressions go, this game makes a good one. It immediately grabs your attention with the stark, bold, monochromatic cover with the Ouroboros emblem, and the components are uniformly good, with thick, nicely illustrated playing boards representing six Viking warriors, good quality tokens for tracking health and glory, and two decks of cards, 68 action cards and 78 pass cards, beautifully illustrated by Craig Peterson, creator of the indie comic book series Echoes from the Drift. The rules book is less impressive, being rather densely packed and slightly too incoherent for what is, at its heart, a very simple card game. Information doesn't always flow logically, and snippets of useful content are either buried or repeated unnecessarily. The game includes a standard mode and an advanced mode, but the only difference is the advanced mode grants each player character a special ability and variable stats. As such, unless you are playing with young children or very casual gamers, I think you could safely skip to the advanced rules. Each player chooses a character, sets their health to 10 and their glory to 0, draws a starting hand of 3 action cards and play begins. On your turn you can choose to walk the pass or hide. If you hide, you must play a hide card from your hand and your turn immediately ends with no chance to play additional cards or draw more cards into your hand. Any enemies in front of you will ignore you and so will the gods I expect after such cowardly behaviour, and you can choose to move all the enemies from in front of you to either the player on your left or the player on your right. But you don't want to hide, where's the fun in that? You want to walk the pass. When you do that you get to draw a number of pass cards, not action cards, equal to your speed value. At this point you can, if you so wish, play speed cards from your hand to increase or decrease your speed characteristic. Going fast is reckless, but may lead to greater rewards. There are four different kinds of cards in the pass deck. The first are the endless, these are the enemies. Any endless you draw must be placed in front of you to battle with. The other cards are Greek fire, runes and storm hammers, all of which you keep in your hand along with your action cards. Having drawn your pass cards, if there are any endless in your play area, you must deal with them. You are not allowed to hide at this point, that option has passed. You can combat these enemies with a combination of action and pass cards, playing as many cards as you wish to resolve the encounter. There are four different action cards that are useful. If you have an attack card, you can play it to slay one endless. You remove that endless card and gain one glory. If you have a defend card, you can use it to block attacks from two endless cards. You will not take damage from those enemies, but neither will you slay them or gain any glory. Similarly, if you have an evade card, you can use it to evade one endless card, avoiding the attack without slaying your foe. If you have a steal card, you can use it to draw one extra card from the pass deck. This may help you get something useful, but there's always a chance even more endless will emerge to fight. Additionally, you may have pass cards that are helpful. Greek fire can be used to slay two endless, removing those cards and granting you two glory points. However, Unless you also discard a defend or evade card, you will take one damage as the Greek fire rages out of control. Finally, there are the Stormhammer cards, which can be used to slay two endless, granting you two glory. After playing all the cards you want to and removing all the slain endless, you will lose one health point for each remaining endless that you did not block or evade. Those endless will then move to the next player. Unlike when you hide, you do not get to choose which direction the endless move. Endless will always continue in the same direction around the table until someone hides and chooses to send them back the way they came. After resolving the combat, if you are still alive, you can perform other actions. You can play speed cards on yourself or any other player to increase or decrease speed. 
You can play rune cards, discarding three to gain one glory or health, or discarding five to gain two glory or health. You can play a steel card to take one random pass card, not an action card, from a player of your choice, or you can instigate a battle with another player. If you are sitting adjacent to the player, you can attack them with Greek Fire or an attack card. If you are sitting farther away, you can only attack them with Greek Fire. When you attack, you specify if you are fighting for glory or health, and then you play a card to begin the fight. If you use an attack card, your opponent can play an evade or defend card to cancel the attack. Alternatively, they can play an attack card of their own. If they do this, not only do they block your attack, but they counter-attack. You then have the chance to play an evade or defend card, or a second attack card. The battle will continue back and forth until someone evades, defends, or cannot play a card and therefore takes a hit. If you use Greek Fire, your opponent can play an evade card to cancel the attack. Alternatively, they can play a defend card, in which case they use their shield to bounce the Greek Fire back at you. You will then have a chance to either evade or defend. As with close combat, the battle will continue until someone evades the attack, or cannot play a card and takes a hit. The winner of the combat gains one glory or one health, depending on the selection the attacker made at the start. The loser will lose one glory or one health. The attacker can then choose to start another fight if they still have cards to play. Once you are done, you replenish your hand of action cards by drawing cards up to the maximum specified on your character sheet, which is either two or three, and then the next player takes their turn. Play will continue until all but one player is dead, or one player gains a total of 10 glory. And that's it. The only other wrinkle in the rules is there are some special, more powerful endless enemies you can add to the deck if you want a more challenging, deadly game. These enemies, called the Nine because there are uh, nine of them, work the same way as regular endless, except they each have a special power, like being immune to attack cards. So as you can see, it's a very simple game. It's a straightforward take that game. You draw some cards, resolve a battle with the endless if necessary, and then you have a chance to screw with the other players. Turns move really quickly, and there isn't much downtime as players are always engaged, figuring out what to do with their cards, defending attacks from other players, or just watching as a tide of endless creeps around the table towards them. I think one of the most interesting parts of the game is the way you have to balance fighting the endless with pushing them onto other players. If you can kill endless, that's great, you will gain glory, but sometimes it may be better to hide from them as they will then slither onto the next player and they become someone else's problem. Gaining glory will win you the game, but so will being the last Viking standing. And isn't it more satisfying to watch all the other players wilt under the attacks you have pushed towards them? So I think this is a fun little game, definitely a filler. The box says it plays in half an hour and that feels about right. Maybe a little longer with six players, especially new players. It moves along at a decent clip, isn't too taxing, and does pretty much what I would expect a game like this to do. You aren't going to play it all night, it isn't going to be your favourite game ever, but as a game to round out the evening, or to fill time until the rest of your game group turn up, it's okay. Not something I would actively hunt down or recommend everybody rushes out to buy, but if you see it cheap somewhere, it might be worth a punt. But that's it from me for now, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really liked the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so, and hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone, bye bye.